so that you can't see anything but too much clutter and messiness, things that we never ever thought about in our previous lives. Um, I'm really excited about today's session. It's on um, social media because actually social media just happens to be a lot of fun. Um, so uh, let me start presenting and um, I'm going to jump between windows. If you have questions, go ahead and share them on the side and Sandy's going to take care of keeping up. Come on, Jerry. So, um, first thing is, let me go over here to, I got, I stole this idea from Katie Page. She only used two slides. I went, you know, when you go back and look at people's presentations, you're like, hmm, she only used two slides. So, um, today we're going to talk about Twitter and TweetDeck, which will probably take up our, most of the time because that's the most confusing for people. Um, and it can be messy. We're going to talk, talk a little bit about Facebook groups. We're going to talk a little bit about Instagram and I'm not an Instagram. Um, I, I have Instagram. I follow people on Instagram. Um, I have been following the Leslie Jordan and watching him every day talk about hunker diners. Um, but I am not an Instagram uh, professional by any means. And we're going to talk a little bit about TikTok. And I just realized that TikTok is one word. We're going to talk a little bit about Pinterest just because everybody knows about it. We're going to talk a little bit about Snapchat just because Jeff Dover uses it. And I'm, I was hoping he'd jump in here today. And we're going to talk about a little bit about Flickr just because I happen to like Flickr. You know, when you do the PD, you can do whatever you want. So um, the first thing I want to do is on Monday, actually on Monday, let's see, let's go to Facebook. On Monday, I posted on Monday somewhere down here, way down in Egypt land. Um, I, this is what I posted. It said, what Facebook groups do you belong to? Teacher groups, human groups, doesn't matter. I'm putting together a PD for Friday. And so I'm going way down here and I'm going down to way down on my Facebook feed. And I'll show you what happened because it was funny. Um, way down past this and this and this oh golly okay so look here i had 18 comments and i had a bunch of people do the thumbs up thing but on the comments i have virginia swallen paulette wagner um a friend of mine from from columbia south carolina a friend of mine from uh california uh, Catherine Doxy, we all know Catherine Doxy Woodward. She she she's in Camden now. She posted. She gave me a bunch of ideas. Um, Jerry, look at here. Brittany Nicole Hernandez posted, and um, Joe Jenkins posted. He is a big Led Zeppelin fan. Julie Bailey uh, West posted. Audrey Curls though got the um, Audrey Curls got the. Uh, gold star for the day because Audrey posted like 3,000 things. So I went back over here. Let's go to social media. And I posted, I created a spreadsheet and I um, put down Facebook groups for different people. Now, um, then I went back and looked at the uh, sign-in sheet for people who were interested in taking this. And we had um, Janie who is interested in CTE. We had Jerry, who is interested in high school history. We had um, some middle school people. Let me look on my little list here. Oh, we got Ralph Lang, who's culinary and CTE. We got some middle school math teachers. We got a middle school science teacher. We got Tara, who's a middle school English teacher. We got a bunch of early grades people. And if everybody came in, we got a library person or two. So what I figured was I'd go back over here to Facebook and I'd take out Kathy Blades and um, I'm going to put in high school history. And all of a sudden, all of these groups will come up that you can join. 
No, let me come back over here to the meet and stop presenting for just a minute because it feels weird when you don't see people. Um, I, I went and checked on everybody to see who had Facebook pages. And I don't know if everybody has a Facebook page. Put over there in the chat if you have a Facebook page. Shelly, I know you do. Donna, I know you do. Janie, I know you do. Jackie does. Trish does. Stacy, Brenda, Shelly, Stephanie. I think Stephanie, I think I follow you. Um, um, Amanda, Felicia, Lindsay. Um, Jerry, do you have a Facebook page? Do not. Sandra Reynolds does not. She has an Instagram account. Um, Tara, I know you do. Holly does. I didn't find you, Holly, so I figured you did not. Um, Candy does. does. Kathy knows I'm allergic to Facebook. She has a thing about it. I do. Okay, that's why I didn't find you, Winnie. Um, the thing is, when I was a media specialist before Cindy Walker um, is a media specialist now at Craytop Middle School. I was a media specialist at Craytop Middle School, and I had a Facebook page for my school, and um, I posted a little bit of stuff. But um, and I, if I was still a media specialist there, I probably still had the page, and I it would have probably gotten that was back in 2012. That was a long time ago. So um, I probably would use it more now. And most schools, most of our, I think most of our schools have Facebook pages now, and some principals are really really on the ball with Facebook and their twi they have their Facebook, their Twitter account and their Instagram account all linked and everything gets posted. So whether you have a, have a personal one or not, a Facebook page may or may not serve you. For example, Candy could have one if she wanted to for um, Shalbara. Um, Lindsay could have one for the high school, but uh, and Janie, you could have one for CTE, but more than likely, CTE would probably be a big umbrella one for all of y'all. So it just it just depends. But you can go out and find groups and join those groups. And when you do, sometimes you just click like and you get in, get all their stuff. And sometimes you have to have to join and request it because they don't want crazy people. They're trying to scam, to um, scam for you know, make sure crazy people don't join. There's never a hundred percent on that but they're at least doing their best to make sure that crazy people um don't join so um what i'd like for you to do i've shared this with every single one of you this um spreadsheet because sandy says i really like spreadsheets and let me see let me get back in here and present um if you want to you can take a look at the spreadsheet a couple of you went ahead and jumped on it early and um, this is some Facebook groups. If you do belong to Facebook group, book groups that you find very handy, helpful, humorous, whatever, um, if you'd like to add them to there, um, other people might go back and, and take a look at them. That'd be great because um, I certainly can't find all the Facebook groups. And what would apply to, say, Janie or to Lindsay Daniels may not apply to Stephanie Sanderlin. So, if you have a Facebook group that you really like, add it to the, add it to the spreadsheet. Now, let's go back over here and look at this. So we've done Facebook groups and we need to talk about TikTok because TikTok is something. I spent an entire night last night doing TikTok. Let me see in the chat window or unmute yourself for a second and tell me um, how many people um, either have a, do you have a TikTok account? Um, you don't have to admit it if you don't want to. Um, if, do you know what TikTok is? So I, I know Donna Corbo knows and I know Lindsay Daniels knows. It's like uh, the new YouTube, you know, when people would go on YouTube and get lost in cat videos, it's the new uh, YouTube cat video platform. So Amanda Dines is um, is our pro on TikTok. Okay. Okay, Stacy. No, no. Okay. So, do any of y'all remember Vine? If you remember Vine, um, 
it, TikTok is like Vine. It's a 15 second music video. Okay. Um, there's another one called, oh shoot. I looked at it last night. It was late. Um, Deb Smack. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, there are a bunch of them all on the same, but TikTok's the biggest one. Now, the thing about TikTok is, it's a vi you make a little video, it's a music video, you can become famous, you can sell stuff online somewhere else, you can just make millions and billions and trillions of dollars. However, TikTok um, does have a little bit of um, porn out there, and they have some other salacious stuff. Not to mention, the TikTok is the Chinese app. Um, and so last night when I called my little niece and asked her about TikTok because she's 13 and she knows everything, um, I asked her if I could use it on computer and she said yes. And I asked her if I had to have an account if I used it on a computer and she said no. As long if all I want to do is watch the videos, I do not have to have an account, but I have to have an account if I want to create videos. So then, um, my nephew was walking through and he's like, don't you dare download that app. It's Chinese. They'll get all your data. And I thought, well, what data? Okay, um, let's see. They'll see my social media slideshow. Mm -hmm. Okay, they might see my social media Facebook groups. Okay, but um, I don't, I went ahead and downloaded it, obviously, but just to see what it was like. Just uh, just know that uh, some people in the chat window are talking about whether or not they can use it for kids. I think the, the thing to focus on is the fact that kids are using it. The older children are using it. They they were using it. Snapchat was the big thing. It's still a thing, but it's not as big. Then Vine was the big thing. It's not as big. Now TikTok is the big thing. So as long as their attention span lasts on it, <laughs> they're going to be focused on it. And then something new is going to come out and they're going to switch to that. But um, just like Kathy was saying that there's inappropriate. These are not for educational purposes. These are not designed for educational purposes. So you definitely have to be careful, but acting like it doesn't exist with kids and not having those conversations um, probably isn't helping them navigate these waters because when they have a smartphone, they can, download all of these things and get involved and they are very uh, adept at lying about their age because um, they know that they can't do it under a certain age so they've just gotten the habit of lying about their um, age to be able to do what they want to do so um, we, we just want you to be aware of it and, and Kathy's going to um, help us through those treacherous waters. Um, Christina Bowyer and I did a, a thing for um, now on social media and kids and we did not talk about uh, sexual predators online. We didn't even address that. And I think that so surprised um, the students because I think they were expecting a typical do not meet strangers online kind of thing. And um, I had a student at CVS who works down here at the beach uh, tell me that she remembered me from that talk. Um, so now every time I go in there, she just, she says, hello, Miss Blades, how are you? Um, it was, um, I think it was an eye opener for, for them about different things and what they do now and may follow them through life. And I uh, don't think they quite thought about it like that. So I'm um, anyway, so back to, and TikTok was one of our things that we talked about that day. Um, little people can like, like fourth and fifth graders can sign up for TikTok. And if they put in their correct address, I mean, correct birthday, there's a kid's version, but more, more than likely those fifth graders are not doing that. I don't know. And they're doing it on their phones. I have no control over that. What I do want to tell you about TikTok is I am so sorry. So, so very sorry, Jerry and uh, Janie and Lindsay, you need to tell the PE teachers they should have come to this this morning. You know, back when I had face to face things, I, PE teachers were like, all the people in my room they don't come see me anymore it hurts my feelings but now um i don't seriously look at this pe teachers are stars on tiktok so last night this is what i did i'm going to go back and present let me do that let me turn this on because you will be like oh my goodness 
So that's what I did last night. I spent an entire evening after I watched a movie until way late at night looking at TikTok. And I went in and I used the hashtag, um, I used the hashtag teachers of TikTok. And this is what, oops, that's not what I want to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I found. So, so I took screenshots of everything because you will notice down here in the right hand, left hand corner right here at Mr. Underscore Chastain 101. He is a teacher on TikTok. He did a really cute one. Okay, this next one. This is a, um, this man, Jerry, at Jink Jen, at Jink Jink Teach, he's a history teacher. Okay. And these were all good people. These were, these were all great TikToks. And they had to do it in 15 seconds, which is, which is tough. Um, this is a TE, this is a PE teacher. And she says, at, she's at I teach PE. Now, this is a math teacher. I had two math teachers that teach math on with TikTok. Miss Crafty Math Teacher. This is, um, this one was funny. JProLo88 about, um, you should go look at this one just because she does um, what we think teachers are doing during um, quarantine and what their life is really like. You might identify. This one is Nellie6551 and she just went on shoes her children where her students wear to class. This one is Courtney White and she hates quarantine. This guy is awesome. He is Coach Fault and he um, he has several TikToks and he's married to a special ed teacher. You'll see that in a sec. Okay. For those of you, um, you, everybody needs to go to this one at the T black Irby. Oh my gosh. If you, if PE teachers, oh my gosh, y'all just go check this one out. This one is amazing. This one's truly amazing. Um, Trust me on that. Okay, let me go back. Okay, there you go. There's the coach, and there's his special wife, a special ed teacher. This one was a funny one. Okay, this one is for you, Janie. This is um, at Ms. underscore T. Stalins, and she talks about how going to college is not okay, that going to trade school is awesome. I was really glad to find her. Um, this is um mrs small 716 she's a middle school teacher say no more she does funny stuff for middle school teachers um this is a lady that was on tv the other day trisha zeneker and um <laughs> she i don't know what possessed her to go on tiktok but she she does tiktok all the time she's a middle, she's an elementary teacher um this is a lady you've got to see her at underscore simone and um, her kindergarten children are absolutely in love with her. Absolutely in love with her. She's my last person. And I don't know. Oh, shoot. There's one. I will post it on the spreadsheet. But there is a PE teacher who was lying down in the floor, had a uh, solo cup on his head, and was able to st stand up without the solo cups um, falling off, which was just like I didn't know people could do that. So um, if you go to TikTok and you look at TikTok, what you do is you use the hashtag um, teachers of TikTok and you'll find a bunch of stuff. And there are a couple of history teachers. They're not, I didn't look up English teachers, Tara, sorry. But anyway, TikTok is, um, TikTok is, PE teachers are really maximizing use of it during this time, which I can kind of see that really and truly. Okay. So, um, and, um, I think there's, um, I, Nikki Broom's not on here today. I think she knows a lot about TikTok. I think so. I, I, I think she might. Okay. I think some of our teachers have just kind of played around with it. I know Lisa Rose has played around with it and thinks it's awesome because she, Kathy, crazy ones. Yep. Janie um, would like to know if you could walk them through the process um, of how you get it on your computer if you're not using it on your smartphone. Sure. Let me present again. 
the only way you're going to do it um, to actually use it use it is um if you if you use the app on your smartphone or tablet but okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go over here and do a new tab and last night i did TikTok, and i clicked on it i'm hoping it'll work today um and i can watch now and this is where i got this is why janie this is why i stopped using the computer and just went on over and got me a video um got me an app now also and i go over to discover and my computer's getting slow because i've got a lot of tabs open uh there's a rock you so know, you so. don't have to log in to be able to um, no. search that's what according to heather my niece she said no just to watch them but what i couldn't figure out on this and it drove me crazy uh i'm over here on the menu side i do not see a search okay um I can't remember. I cannot remember because I have not done a meet on a tablet in a while. Let me go back over here. I can close that out now. Let me stop presenting for a sec and talk to Janie. Um, I haven't done. I have a. I have an iPad sitting here just in case. But I can't remember. I. I know on a, on a phone, you can't. If you're in a meet, you can't present. And I know if you if you call in on a phone, like I have an app on my phone for Meet, I can't present inside of that. And I'm not 100% sure you can do that inside of an iPad. So, Janie, if you'll come to my office hours, we can play on that together because I can do it on a, because I hate to get out of here and go into that because I think it could be just a mess. Um, and if I go in on my tablet, the microphone is going to just absolutely send people over the edge. Because the two together will be just distracting. Um, the only way I could find people was if I did it on the app. But I didn't have to log in with the app. But I did it on a tablet. I don't know that I could have done it on my phone. Because I like to be able to see things up close and personal. So that didn't quite answer your question. But if you'll come see me this afternoon or next week or just any old time, I'll, sh I'll show it to you, okay? As that sound. Um what else? Are there any questions? Not right now. Shelly was um, asking if people have checked out Jim Wright's YouTube channel for his PE videos. Oh, I bet that's awesome. Because he is one. He, I bet that is truly awesome. I saw his bicycle one that is that Ashley rode along beside of him and did. And it was just so, truly awesome. I would think, to, for me, YouTube would be easier than TikTok. Because for one thing, you can do a long. It doesn't have to be 15 seconds. That's just me. I, I just stick with YouTube, but you know, YouTube's old school. So if you go in, I think it's coach underscore Terry. If you go under and if you search for PE teachers of TikTok, you will find that guy who bounced the solo cup on his head. It is just amazing. He does all this really fancy Cody Eves kind of stuff. And really? there's been a ton of um, videos put in since quarantine. So if if you're getting sick of streaming something and uh, you want a good laugh, just know that you'll you'll be in stuck in it for a couple of hours, even though they're yeah. only 15 second videos, because it goes right from one to the next. And that it's like won't let you out. It's like a room with no doors. Like you once you're in there, you're stuck. So yeah. just know it, the kids love it. Yes. My daughter is sitting there for hours flipping through the phone. I'm like, what are you doing? She's still on TikTok watching videos. Oh, you got to see this. Oh, this is so funny. So anyway, yes. just know it's there. But again, it's for adults. It's not for kids, um, but kids are on it. So we need to know about it. It's like Tumblr. I did not mention Tumblr, but Tumblr, T-U-M-B-L-R, is a photography microblogging place. It's got some of the most gorgeous photography in the world, but it's got some of the most gorgeous porn for not pornography also and all that kind of mess because um, when a couple of teachers wanted to use it for their English 
this was back when Paul was around and he's like, I can't do Tumblr because it's got tons of porn. So no, you, that's, it's, that's the reason. A lot of these things are awesome, but they have a whole thing of porn or more than just, you know, it, uh, -uh. so that's why, um, that's what, yeah, yeah. It's just, it, it is out there. Okay. So let me run back over here and present now. Go back to my window. Here we go. So, because it's 925 and I don't want to run out of time, I'm going to go ahead and attack Twitter now because it'll be because it's a little bit involved. Um, there are a lot of people who, when they when you first get to Twitter, they're like, I don't know why in the world anybody wants to know what somebody ate for some breakfast, which I agree with. But um, Twitter is a really really awesome way to connect with people ar around the world with your content area. It is a great way for you to get PD. It is a great way to participate in conversations around the world. It is also a great way for you to um, take care of that standard that says that you collect, you connect with colleagues around the world, around your state and around the world. Um, because one, we can't all present in um, Spain or, you know, Argentina, but you can connect with people in Argentina. Um, Sunday afternoon, Donna Seigelman sent me a, um, a message on Facebook that said that Brittany was doing, Brittany Hernandez, who used to teach at the high school, she t um, was doing uh, Spanish lessons for anybody that wanted to pop into her on her Facebook page. She was doing Facebook Live. And she had hung up a piece of paper on her um her her wine her cordless blinds and she was doing um Spanish phrases for people who wanted to know how to do Spanish phrases. And you could just tell her what you wanted and she'd she'd say it and she'd do it for you. So um anyway um I asked her, I don't, I don't know if she has, um, if she's befriended any of the Spanish teachers from Camden, which would be Joanna Broyles and um, Maria Ormerod. But a lot of people that are on Facebook are also on Twitter. So I'm going to walk you through Twitter right now. But first, um, Sandy, can you tell me how many people have Twitter accounts? Will they all say whether they do or not? I can look at my social media thing over here and see. I know a couple of people like yesterday, like Brenda did, Patty did, Janie did, Donna. I know did. a lot of people did it last year when George Kiros, you know, came and did our session. Right. Um, but some people still have not. Um, again, you know, I was a hard sell to get on Twitter, but you kept at me and at me, and I finally did it. And um, I do get a lot of information off Twitter for um, professional development and work. And I was able to get several of our speakers just by messaging them through Twitter and just asking them whether or not they would uh, do a webinar for us. So there are a lot of advantages to it. Definitely. I don't get hung up on all the other stuff, but I definitely use it for work. I, I, I don't get hung up on all this other stuff either. Okay. So let me find my little page of cheat sheet notes for Twitter. The first thing is um, there are about 250 billion tweets a year. There are about 350,000 every hour. And I even have a map of that right here. And it will show you if it comes up. It shows you all the tweets that are going out. And this is a live time. This is being updated in, in real time. Okay. Um, I found that yesterday and I just thought it was kind of interesting. But um, the thing about Twitter is when you log into Twitter and create your account, they, get, they give you a weird name, which is called a handle. And you can change that. And you should. Now, back when I first started on Twitter, that was back when people didn't talk to anybody on the Internet because, you know, because you, people were going to find out where you lived and they were going to come kill you. So, you, you know, you, you really you wanted to be anonymous. Well, we've come a long way since then. And if you have a really long user handle that says MRS5399945, nobody will ever be able to find you. And so if, if that's your, if, if that's what you want, 
then just don't fool with Twitter. But if you are an admin or a teacher who wants to participate in Twitter or in a Twitter chat, you need your name out there. And mine until last year was KF Blades and people who followed me knew that. And then it occurred to me that I was talking to teachers and telling them what they should do. And I had not, I was talking the talk, but not walking the walk. So I went back and I changed mine to Kathy underscore Blades, North Carolina, because anybody that knows me does not call me Catherine Blades. They call me Kathy Blades. And the other thing was I had my little um, cute little emoji up there, the one that made me look not fat and old. And um, Mary Simmons told me when we were doing a presentation last year, she said, um, or a year before last, Kathy, you have to go get you an older picture because I cannot have your younger picture because that's not what you look like. You know, your friends, your friends can be, can be, you know, and particularly any of those, you know, about Mary, Mary, Mary can always cut to the quick and cut to the chase, but it was true. So I went back and I got my old fat picture and I put it up there because people wouldn't recognize me for my other one. And I can see all y'all laughing. I know, I know y'all are laughing. I can see it. I can see it, even though I can't see any one of you, even those of you who have muted videos, I can see you laughing. Okay. So when you make your account, you want a real name and you want um, a little description of yourself. Now, if you are a big time Twitter person, you might want two accounts. Valerie person has two. She has one for her kids and one for her personal stuff. Um, the thing about it is on Facebook, people have to confirm you and they have to, you, you, and you can un, un, uh, and you can get rid of them. But on Twitter, you can follow anybody you want. Okay. So, the thing is, when you follow people, you should be judicious in who you follow. Who do you want to follow? Do you want to follow people who are history teachers or English teachers or CTE teachers or middle school math teachers or high school math teachers? Yes, that's what you want to do. So you find one or two people that you want to follow and you follow them and then you see who they follow. So let's go over here and let me find somebody that I don't follow. Let me see. Let's go over here and let's find, um, in fact, I'm going to find some PE teachers right now because um, cause there are no PE teachers today. We could just use PE teachers. So if you'll notice over here in the search right here, I put that little pound sign, which is also called a hashtag. And I put a hashtag and I put PE teachers. And now when I put that in search, because I use the hashtag, I can find lots of PE teachers. I can find top tweets by them and others who've used the hashtag. I can find the latest tweets and people that have used the hashtag. And then I can find PE teachers who have put PE teacher hashtag in their description. So I can find PE teachers here, PE teachers there, PE teachers everywhere. I can find high school math. I got a high school math, a high school math, a high school math. Let me go to the latest high school math. How to improve your math scores. I'm sure they're selling something. This is like at times like teacher pay teacher. Um, here we go. Trigonometry, high school math. Let's go up here and do high school history. Notice I'm not following people right now. I'm just trying to find um, courtroom 600, courtroom 600. We find a teacher. Um, Kelly Travers, hi, high school teachers. What are some of your best practices in the classroom? And she did that back in 2019. Let me show you another little trick. So if you're looking for teachers to follow, and this doesn't matter if you're doing this for, um, I can't spell this morning, teachers to follow on Facebook, Twitter, doesn't matter. I can't, yeah, here we go. So I notice that this is from, let's see. This is from 2017. That's kind of getting old. 
This one's from 2017. So, remember when Lindsay showed y'all how to do this? Click on tools anytime. And I'm being generous. I did past year. I, I mean, I'll go back to last May, you know. Um, June, June. But if I'm, I could even do the past month. The last 15 hours. So when you start, if you want to follow people, go look, go search. Teachers to follow on, on Twitter, but make sure you use your search engine wisely. Otherwise, you'll get stuff from 2012 and 2013, and that's way too long ago. Okay. Kathy? So, yep. Shelly says, when you get a new follow, always check them out. If it's someone who has nothing related to um, education, you can block them. She's and correct. she said you can also tell if it's a fake account if it has few followers, but it's following thousands of people. And when people follow you, let me just show you. I may have got a, um, okay, this one's one. Uh, wait, let me go back to my profile. Shelly, make sure I go back over to that. But um, this is what your profile, when you create your account, you have a profile. You're going to have your name. It will be your real name because you're not going to hide. And if it's your personal account and you want to hide, that's fine. But if you're doing a teacher account, make sure it's your real name. Um, then give yourself a handle that is normal and doesn't look like 3,500 BC. Then give yourself a little description. I tell them where I'm from. I joined a, um, a while back. Um, my sister, the one, uh, one of my sisters told me one time, she was doing something and she looked and she said, why in the world does anybody want to follow you? I went, I don't know. She said, that's simply amazing. I think that's crazy. I said, well, I do too. She said, that's insane. I don't know. Those people must be crazy. I said, well, you know, they're teachers. You can't help it. Um, so I asked the, the, I did ask about 12 hours ago who their favorite TikTok teacher was and nobody, I don't think is replied. Oh, wait. Um, this is, I retweeted this. This, I retweeted this from Craven County. Um, I retweeted that. So I'm going to talk about what that means. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to tweet. And I'm going to tweet something just to Shelly because I know hers off the top of my head. Um, oh, what new PD book are you reading? And then I always set, finish it with the hashtag CurryTalkK12, and then anybody that follows that will see it, and they might decide to. Um, so I'm going to tweet that to, to, to Shelly, particularly since she's sitting in this thing. She can respond pretty quickly. And when she responds, it'll pop up over here on the notifications. So home takes you home to the top of your tweets. Explore allows you to put in hashtags and find anything you want to from gardening to middle school English. Notifications are how people send you, uh, reply to your tweets, like your tweets, or follow you. Over here is what's happening to, to you personally. If you and another person follow each other, you can direct message them. But if um, Brad Pitt does not follow you, you can't message him. Okay. Bookmarks are things that you like that you want to save for later. List are list of, so if you want to do a list of all your, the best middle school math teachers, high school history teachers, greatest CTE teachers, best fourth or fifth grade teachers, you can make a list and add their names so that you have a list of people that you think are excellent under that list. It could be, it can be anything, but um, it's great for c coming up with a list of, because it's a list of the names of people, the, twi the tweet handles of people that are good in a field. Okay. Here's your profile. When you're on your profile, you can see all the tweets that you've produced. You can see all the replies that people replied to you. And if they haven't, it doesn't show anything. These are um, 
media things like videos that were posted. This is from um, NC Tithe with Shelly and Candy. And likes. Likes used to be called favorites. However, they stopped calling it that because um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you um, that it's your favorite. It just means something you want to store for later. So when I um, this is one of that the this is a, a TikTok person um, and I put a heart on it and it means I get to keep it. It doesn't necessarily mean you like it forever, but it will save the things that you like. So if if you put the little heart on there. Let's go back over here to home and I'll show you how that works. So, oh, here we go. Um, Patrick Hasselman is just awesome. He's just so nice. He's from Virginia. So I want to save something he did. I put a little heart on it and that will be in my likes. That's the way it's like a bookmark, it, but it's, it just keeps the list of the things that I like. Um, if I go down here and um, I like something else, let's see. Um, I can like it and then I can go back to it. It's great. Okay. So I think Shelly did something for me here. There she did. She said, um, bold, bold schools is my new book. And then what I can do is I can go here and I can retweet that. But if I want to retweet it with a comment, I retweet it with a comment here. Click. Okay. So now that Stacy is, um, following me, I'm following her. Now I can direct message her. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about TweetDeck because we're running out of time. Um, the real, the real thing that, that the most powerful thing about tweet, Twitter is that people have Twitter chats. There are regular Twitter chats and there's slow Twitter chats. A slow Twitter chat, they put a question out at the beginning of the week and they give you four or five days to answer, and it it goes slowly. With a Twitter chat, it goes so fast. People just want to throw up. So the way to do a Twitter chat, if you participate in one, is to go over here to TweetDeck. And it's called TweetDeck. And it's you can use it on a phone. You can use it on a computer. You can use it on a tablet. You can use TweetDeck anywhere you want to. Um, and you click on TweetDeck. And you log in with your Twitter account. And then if you want to search for something, say I want to search for um, ag. This will pull up anything with the hashtag ag. If I want to pull up bold school, this will pull up anything with bold schools. If I want to pull, if I want to search for Island Librarian, I think this is going to do it for me. Um, yep, Island Librarians, and I think, nope, I didn't. Okay, that didn't. Let me see. Kathy, while you're pulling that up, just to, to bring it back to content, um, I was shocked to know that kids are on Twitter. And um, it's a big thing for them. So we're talking about using it for PD, and that's the only way that I really use it. But do know that your kids are on there, and they're getting information and sharing information um, in that way as well. Um, so you just want to be kind of a little bit ahead of the game and know where, where they are in the, the process. Because Twitter is open unless you create a private group that you only allow certain people in. It's, it's basically open to anybody and everybody. Um, and even though you may have a personal account and a professional account, you just need to be careful because we're all educators and people mm -hmm. in the world don't think that we have a personal life. So right. we just all need to be very careful about it, but know that kids are using it too. Um, and with that said, um, students do not use Facebook. That's for old people. Um, students use TikTok, they use Snapchat, they use things that I've never heard of, things that will appear next week and then disappear in three weeks time. They do use Twitter a good bit. And some teachers have, um, particularly at the high school level, have a have a teacher account. And instead of using Remind, they use like a twit like Twitter. 
it um and a lot i think a lot of parents use twitter a lot of parents use facebook but if they are younger parents they only use facebook to get information or to complain about something they i don't think they um use it the way old people use it to, which is to check you know what's happening in your hometown if you don't live in your hometown anymore things like that okay so um the thing is if you can see over here on the left i can tweet i can search for things but this is i add a column and i'm going to add a column i'm going to search right here and i'm going to add the column um oops sorry i'm going to add a column um to why is it oh there we go um i'm going to do curry top k12 and this is going to show everything that has that katie did kim did sandy did um amy morgan this is going to show me because people use the hashtag curry talk k12 so if somebody was doing a, a twitter chat and they were doing a twitter chat called curry talk k12 i could add this column and it instead of let me pop back over here instead of looking at all this stuff that's just flying by this helps you weed out all the extra noise so if somebody says i'm going to have a twitter chat on bold schools and we're going to meet on tuesday nights and here are going to be here are the questions for this week what was your favorite thing what was your favorite quote what was your whatever then when you open up this column you can type in your response because twitter chats go very quickly and they really they can go so quickly that people get overwhelmed and they go i am never doing this again this is the most ridiculous thing i've ever done and i don't know why in the world anybody would want to do it would people who do twitter chats agree with that say yes or no over there in the in the col column the other thing is if you are looking for something specific seriously when you search hashtags you can find something specific but you can also ask people questions so for people who say i can't i don't know why in the world um chrissy hodges really likes kyleen beer beers and um she had read a book that kyleen had done years ago and she was interested in finding out about one of the little stories she put in there about some little boy so she, we ask on twitter we asked kyleen beers about that and within about 10 minutes kyleen had responded authors journalists newspaper people lots of people on twitter they respond to you if you ask them a question um they don't always and some are more um or more giving and sharing of their time than others but um if you want to if you're an english teacher you should definitely follow your favorite authors particularly authors that you use in your classroom they, they, because you will find out all kinds of things and during this quarantine time when sandy reached out and said is there anybody willing to come and do pd for us and they did it for free these these people who charge ten thousand dollars to come and spend a day at your school or in your school district the people who can, who did that who has who have come because she asked on twitter did it for free and there are some authors out there who will who have um uh we'll we'll do we'll, might even pop in your classroom for free now not all of them will scholastic has a whole list of people who do who will do twi twitter chats with you but twitter is a great thing to use and i tell you what i don't want to eat up eat up any more time with this but if you're interested in it but it drives you crazy um come see me during my office hours it doesn't have to be day you can come today or you can come next week or you can just send me a, a message and i'll meet with you okay um, um, yeah when um when i am tweeting and i'm trying to use hashtags sometimes i have this fear and i don't know if it's unfounded that i'll use a hashtag that that doesn't convey the right meaning that it means something i don't think it does how could i check that so i don't mistakenly um use a hashtag that would potentially mean something i don't intend is there a way to check that are there master yeah. lists or there are master lists of hashtags and let me go see am i still yep yeah, let me see um 
And there are some educational ones too. Just like if you search for educational Twitter chats, um, here we go. Top hashtags. There are top hashtags. Also, though, when you're doing, um, when you when you're in a, when you want to use a hashtag, if you can find somebody else who uses a lot of hashtags, like somebody famous, like George Kuros or Matt Miller or um, Colleen Beers or or um, somebody like that, and if you can use the hashtags they use. Because sometimes I might create a hashtag that nobody else has ever heard of. No, Google EDU is a hashtag that everybody in the world has heard of. Genius Hour is a hashtag everybody has heard of. Um, uh, middle school math, middle school ELA, middle school teachers, high, uh, high school history, um, high school social studies. If you were looking for these, let me look up uh, 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 Mr. Lang. Uh, culinary arts teachers, um, Stacy, fourth and fifth grade, um, fourth and fifth grade teachers or elementary teachers. If you're looking for things, and there are, um, Ralph, there's a ton of stuff on um, Twitter for culinary teachers and on Facebook for culinary teachers, and there's some really nice guys who probably were like you and were real chefs before they became teachers, you know. People who really know what they're doing, and um, but they're not. They might be in Hawaii or they might be in San Francisco, which is kind of cool because you can um, you can tap into some interesting things. Plus, Ralph, you probably know people all around the world anyway. I know you do, so there you go. Um, Donna would be interested in um, animals. High school people doing. Um, animal things. Let's see who else is here. Um, Leah would be interested in doing um, lab assignments. <laughs> Tara's interested in English. So let's jump over here right quick because I'm going to run out of time to Instagram. I'm I follow people on Instagram. I'm not an Instagrammer. Sandy's an Instagrammer. A lot of y'all are. I think Lindsay's an Instagrammer. Um, this is Top Dog Teacher. She was Teacher of the Year. She was Teacher of the um, of the Month. She was Teacher of the Everything. She's got her own Teacher Pay Teacher, of course. She's got her own site. She does all this really pretty stuff. The thing is, um, I was on Reddit last night, which I never go to because I just don't. And they were talking about how all these teachers on Instagram have the most beautiful classrooms in the whole wide world and must spend like $3 million a year on them. And they probably do. Um, and then they get sponsors and then they make more money and they get, and people send them things for their classroom. Instagram makes me just, it, it just makes me nervous. Just I, I, if I, if mm, I can get a couple of ideas from it, but I'm, my library would never look like their libraries. And my classroom would never look like there. I mean, my gosh, it looks like they went to a teacher pay teacher conference. And on the last day, they were cleaning out and got everything. It all matches and it's all beautiful, but it drives me crazy. So somebody else needs to talk about Instagram because it just it just sends me. Other than Leslie Jordan talking about hunker diners, which I love. Well, I, I can talk about Instagram, but I don't use it for work. I only use it to connect with my nieces and nephews and their kids and um, keep in touch with family. Um, but the reason I joined Instagram to begin with was because my kids are on it. So if my kids are going to be on some social media platform, except for Facebook, I draw the line there. I will um, join the platform and then uh, join them so that I can uh, keep up on what's going on with them, not just to be a supervisor, but to show that I am interested in what they're interested in. And, and um, it, it matters to kids sometimes to just know that you're interested in it. But some people are using Instagram for um, sharing things about their classrooms. You can post videos. Um, you can post um, live stories. You can post pictures. But as Kathy said, it's all just, it's very positive uh, things. Very rarely you'll see somebody post something, um, you know, emotional or 
um, you know, in response to something that's happening to their lives. But most of it is um, fairly on the positive side. And it's just images and descriptions, um, clips. People are in the habit now of posting their daily Enneagram this or 30 day song challenge, or it depends on who you're connected to. I like it because you can follow who you want and not accept people who you don't and keep your group relatively um, small if that's your choice. Um, so as we finish up, look, we only have five minutes left. So Kathy, is it okay if I just go over a few things? Yeah, it is great. I'll stop sharing. So on the, um, and yes, Kat, Candy, you can have more than one account. The, in the chat, I shared an article called The Educator's Guide to Social Media. Um, within that, it just talks about checking the privacy um, policies of these accounts, which is hugely important if you're going to use it with students. Uh, if you're going to take pictures of students, make sure. Uh, I know it's different if they're under the age of 13 and older, but you just want, it's always better to err on the side of caution and make sure that you have parents, uh, the parents know it's going to happen and that you have their um, permission. Also, it's not a bad habit to get into and I always try to get my kids to get into this too. Just because you can take a picture and you can post it doesn't mean you should, especially if somebody else is in it. Um, and I know this might sound trivial, but when we're on field trips and the kids, that was one of the few times where kids could have their cell phones out because they could use them for pictures. But we always had the rule that if you were going to take pictures on the field trip and you were going to post things, you really needed to um, be considerate of other people and definitely no pictures of people sleeping on the bus and posting it for fun. That was one of our, our um, conversations that would come up all the time. But um, definitely check out the privacy policies. Um, make sure that parents are okay with it. Uh, if you're doing the backs of, of kids' heads as opposed to their faces, that's, that's obviously different. Um, if you're just posting about yourself in your classroom and you're not including uh, any personal information about them and they can't be picked out in the photo. Um, you always, always want to make sure that you're protecting their privacy. And just uh, this article just goes on and on about making sure that you are talking about it in real life about what what it is to deal in this uh, virtual landscape. Um, regardless of whether Snapchat says that, that it's going to be gone in X number of seconds, there are always ways to screenshot save, um, record from another device while it's playing. There is always a way to capture whatever it is uh, if a person wants to badly enough. So please be aware that those uh, things exist and kids need to be aware. Um, just because it says it's gone does not mean it's gone and it could affect them, as Kathy said, um, long term. Um, consider your audience. Uh, whenever you're doing any of these, that what is it? What is the purpose of it? Is this the best platform for it? Is this going to give us what we need? Is this going to protect the kids um, in a way that they need to be protected? And just to be thinking about what you post before you post it and be respectful. So I thought this was a pretty good article. Um, and they talked about some of the myths about social media and cyberbullying and things like that. Uh, you know, everybody has their own opinion ab about it. Some of it, this is a little bit older article because it does talk about Google Plus, which no longer exists. But all in all, I thought it covered the information pretty well. Um, again, social media is is not going anywhere. It's alive and well. We can harness it for good. Um, in some situations, like Kathy getting me in the Twitterverse, um, but we have to use caution and um, knowledge when we wade into those waters and be very deliberate about how we help our kids uh, navigate this because they need us to support them and, and um, be encouraging and show them the way. Um, so anyway, I appreciate Kathy, you sharing this with us. Is there anything else you want to add as we close? I do want to add two things. One, the big thing on Twitter last week was um, have, and none of our teachers are doing this, but teachers that were using Zoom were taking pictures of their kids working inside of class zoom classrooms and posting on twitter and that is um that's against every regulation out there none of our teachers are doing that but teachers are want people to know that they are working hard and that their kids are working hard the other thing was there was a little girl on facebook who's either 13 or 14 now and when she found out her mother had posted all these pictures of her from the time she was 
zero to the time now with her looking foolish because when we show pictures of our children to other grown people, they think it's cute and we all do. Um, but she got really upset with her mother because her mother had posted all these things that she now finds embarrassing. Um, and so we do have to be careful about what we post that it won't come back to haunt somebody when they're 23 or 24 that we don't, this is, this is not just in the school world, but in the home world that, that those pictures that we post aren't going to embarrass somebody 10 or 15 years down the road. Yeah, I agree. And, and we've had to set some of those boundaries and it's really, it's all about setting those clear boundaries within your group, whether it's in your classroom or whether it's in your home. Um, like I love to take pictures of my personal children when they fall asleep in the car. I think it's precious. They're horrified by that. I would never post that anywhere. And that was a clear understanding. I take the picture, I show it to them later. I, you know, talk about how sweet it is and I love those kinds of memories. Um, they're horrified that, and, and it's never going to go anywhere other than just be there for me. So, um, you just have to set those, those boundaries up front and explain to people that, um, it's not, you know, it's not okay to share somebody's image if they're not okay with it. Uh, some parents love for things to be shared online. Um, some are very adamantly opposed to it. You have to know your audience. You have to know your purpose about why you're doing it and um, be considerate of each other and show kids that, that those we have to model the things that um, we want kids to do. Uh, yes, I love the pictures of my kids sleeping. I think they're delightful. My kids are horrified. So it's, it's you know, just being considerate of other people. And yeah, we can possibly talk about trying to put some of those things in place at the beginning of the year. We do have some policies regarding um, media and uh, obviously protecting students because some of those are federal regulations, but we can more clearly define those next year, I think, when we could come together as a group and have some input on it. Um, again, there, it's constantly changing, as Kathy said. These things are going out of phase, these things are coming in, so it, we kind of have to speak in uh, maybe broad terms but um, I think it's doable. And, and social media, there's a place for it. Um, we just have to be very deliberate and careful when we wade into those waters. So we hope that you have found this uh, helpful and really appreciate Kathy's time um, putting this all together. And if you wanna um, have a good laugh this weekend, you can go on TikTok and, <laughs> and see some things that will definitely make you laugh. There are some funny ones, um, especially the pet, the pet videos, if you enjoy that sort of thing, or the babies laughing. Um, you can find lots of those things to watch this weekend. So, Kathy, anything you want to finish this up with? Good. I think we're good. I think everybody wants to go do something else right now. They may even have to go to a meet or something. So, well, enjoy the enjoy the uh, sunlight for us both, and um, hopefully, we will uh, all have a good weekend and see you guys next week. Take care. Bye, y'all.